This episode is brought to you by Steelroot, a national leader in helping companies meet cybersecurity compliance requirements and prepare for CMMC. Their experienced team of engineers and consultants assist organizations of all sizes to implement and manage IT systems that meet the technical requirements in DFARS and CMMC. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of 123 CMMC. My name is Dana Mantilla. I am your host, and our guest today is Greg Cranley. How are you? Cranley. I'm well. I'm Cranley. well. How are you? Good, good, good. Greg, why don't you take a minute and tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I, uh, I'm in the cybersecurity business. I've worked in security in the federal government in that marketplace for over 25 years. And... Uh, working mostly with cybersecurity tools, some hardware, but mostly software tools. Okay, all right, good. And today we have a great topic. We're gonna to talk about secure communications. So our first question is, how do you secure data shared by prime contractors and partners? Well, there are a number of tools out there that you can utilize that are very easy to deploy and um, to be able to ensure that you just send them the people you send them to that's as far as it goes and you maintain control of it and so these tools are very effective in um, allowing people to see data edit data but not take control of it not may push it off to their website or their um, their home email or onto their desktop it needs to stay within the boundaries of the rules of which uh, the data was originally put in um, and it, then you can also leverage the fact that you, because you have total control is once your project is done, you can eliminate um, their access and, and any further. So it helps the prime contractor and the government know that the people that participate in the, in the project are not leveraging that information for, you know, their own use or their own negligence or their own theft or maybe some malfeasance. So, you know, you can't have any, you know, it's nice to have rules and placards and things around the office, you know, don't do this and don't click on that. Um, however, you know, there is still the, you know, the uh, level eight of uh, any digitalized system and that's a human being and errors are made, not intentionally for the most part. Uh, sometimes it's had a malfeasance but errors will be made. So just ensure that by by not only educate them and inform them, but also um, put tools in place that will ensure that's the case. So these are good tools for the primes to have when they are when they are gonna be communicating with their subs. And this may also help too with some of the CMMC requirements, however they wind up hashing out in the end uh, with creating secure communications with, for the subs so that they don't necessarily have to go through all of the different layers of CMMC. Correct. And, and you know, these tools are cost effective. They're not very expensive at all. And um, they can be easily deployed. They're not hard or difficult for the end user to use. It's just a the data looks exactly the same. It's, it's There's no inputting passwords or anything like that. It's when you break a rule or move it out of its boundary, it just won't open for you. So because they're cost effective and, you know, in the advent of uh, CMMC 2.0, where they made mention of, and I haven't looked at all the details yet, that level one would be self-attesting. Mm -hmm. um, still is going to become a point where someone says, okay, you can self-attest, but show me how, right? So that doesn't alleviate them from getting the things done that they need to get done. So they need to go ahead and uh, look at these tools, take note on how much it costs them to deploy, and also look at the benefits outside of CMMC, just in relationships, just in board director meetings, just in, you know, you know, people can be transient, right? They keep jobs for two years. And, you know, what happened to that data? I also think too, with the whole self-assessment thing, I was on a call this morning, we were talking about this, 
that um, even though it is self-attest, self-testing, right? Yes, we're doing this kind of thing. Somebody has to eventually sign off on it. And they were talking to some lawyers that were that were saying, obviously, if you're going to get some legal advice of, you know, should I sign off on this? Should I not sign off on this? There's not no lawyer is going to tell you to sign off on something self-assessment if you haven't had any kind of third party come in. And I also heard, too, that the primes may be requiring, even though it is that they're not necessarily having them um, have to do uh, an outside assessment that they're that they may be requiring them. So that was pretty interesting to see that even outside of the government requirements that some of these primes are going to be requiring that some of the subs have somebody go in there and do a third party assessment. I agree. I mean, there's there's lots of prime contractors that do, you know, some very secure stuff, whether they're diagrams or it's Word documents or Excel spreadsheets or pricing or, you know, those types of things, frameworks. Um, you know, and I've seen a lot of stuff on people's website, what they, you know, claim is, you know, oh, yeah, we have this compliance, we have that compliance. It's, you know, well, compliance and compliant are two different things. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. KTL is a Microsoft Gold partner and a CMMC registered provider organization. Their professional team members represent a variety of backgrounds and industries that will map out and guide you on your road to CMMC compliance. The process starts with a dedicated team of CMMC registered practitioners, understand your specific requirements, and are here to help every step of the way. KTL Solutions, delivering tailored solutions so you get the most out of your technology. Visit them today at ktlsolutions.com. All right, so our next question is, so how are we identifying CUI? Um, it seems to be a quandary. I mean, it, and it, and it, it is difficult because I think everybody has, you know, they, they all look at things with different colored glasses on. So it's like, what's, well, that's not really. And, you know, this it is. So, you know, I've seen that bounced around on, uh, discussion boards, the CMMC discussion boards and the LinkedIn group and all that stuff. So I think it's a difficult, um, thing to accomplish correctly. So again, going back to those tools, if you just encrypt those tools and or you you know use a methodology to protect those tools so that people can't see it then you don't have to worry about it going outside and you're controlling it so it's and if you do that to everything then you're in good shape so do you think that's eventually how things are going to be looked at just treat everything as if it's cui just to make sure that you're covered yeah because i think that um you know whether it's you know, CUI from a DOD standpoint, or whether it's just your corporate information. And everybody needs trading trading partners, whether it's in the DOD, you know, supply chain, or whether it's anywhere else. I mean, you need you need control of data. Um, you know, you don't need you know associates sending stuff out. You don't need information from decisions going out. You know, marketing diagrams or PowerPoints that were set up that have very, very sensitive information that were set up to for internal use. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure you have control of that. So I think there's lots of application to what CMMC is doing. Mm -hmm. It just puts a little form around it as opposed to going, like, this is the right thing to do, how to control data. That's a very good point to think about, you know, just because it doesn't fall within the scope of the DOD doesn't mean it's not a good idea to do, right? right. So exactly. That, yeah. So that's a, that's a great point. That's a very good point. All right. So how do you ensure your associates are leveraging their security awareness? Well, I mean, education is always you need to do that regardless. It, it's it's always best if they're educated uh, as best they can. Some people take it more serious than others. Some people are drowning in it uh, and they're just tired of it. Um, you know, this it's, it's too hard to use the systems already, you know, that kind of stuff. So, again, I think using those tools are kind of like that safety net. Because, you know, they, these tools absolutely, absolutely observe the behavior. So you can come back and say, look, <laughs> you know, we put boundaries around this data and we noticed that, you know, 10 times in the last two days, you tried to move it somewhere else. Now, you just may not be thinking or you have different ideas. However, you know, that's why it's not working for you because you're not, you know, keeping within the rules. So it kind of it's a force reminder and it's a way for you to track it and say, OK, now just, you know, let's let's have a, a quick meeting and we'll talk about it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you talk about these tools. So everything is obviously every day something new is coming out. But um, so these are tools that the CISOs would have 
put in place or an MSP would be putting in place for a smaller organization. So how do they know that what's the best of the best of these tools? Well, I, you know, well, I think that, you know, a lot of them work together and, um, and uh, they, um, it's easy to demonstrate them. It's easy for them to try them. It's, you know, it's one of those things that takes 20 minutes to set it up and you can start using it. Um, I wouldn't bother, you know, the, the IT security team with managing those tools because, you know, once you set up the rules and the parameters, you know, you just put people in it. You know, so it's it's more of an administrator of the program or, you know, one of their people on, on, their, on their team that can just say, okay, you know, ABC company is now part of the team. So we need these four people with these, you know, email addresses to be put into the system. And then we can include them with, on, with things, information, and, uh, and then we control the information they get. And it's pretty as simple as that. It's not that difficult. So here's something, and this is something I, I don't think a lot of, well, some people do realize that since most of the DIB, they're not large organizations, they're smaller organization, is automation in, to assist in meeting CMMC requirements difficult to deploy and use for the smaller companies? Right. It's uh, it's extremely simple to deploy. I, I use them myself, and uh, I can deploy them. I deploy them. So that's, that's, that's an easy attestment there. I'm a sales guy, so... If I deployed them, that's pretty easy to use. Easy to use. Yeah, Good. I'm not an engineer, so that's for sure. Neither am I. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. So you think that that's a good idea to put some kind of automation in place, and it won't be hard to for them to use. I suggest they at least look into it and get relative information and get familiar with them, and then of course it's a business decision after that. Mm -hmm. You know, cost versus you know what's the benefit. Mm -hmm. Well, this was all really, really good stuff here. So is there anything else you want to throw out there with this topic before we go? No, I, you know, I wish everybody good luck that watches these, these, these videos and, um, and getting through this and, um, you know, nailing this thing down because I know it's a moving target. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, and I can always be reached out at Federal Supply Chain Consulting. Great. And, you know, the, we all need to help each other with this. This is, uh, there's, a, there's a lot to get done. And if we all do our part, It'll make the task a lot easier. So thank you very much for taking your time and your expertise and sharing it with us. Thank you very much, Dana. I appreciate it. All right. Have a good thank day. You. you too. Thank you, everybody, for uh, watching and listening. And we hope to see you on the next episode of 123CMMC. Take care.